Hey, Crazy Bob here. Today I want to talk to you guys about something that is near and dear to most people that drive um, M cars, and that is keeping them looking good. So there's a ton of uh, information on YouTube, and uh, I can tell you there's a lot of good stuff there. One of the sites that I have uh, watched and I'm always amazed by is uh, Ammo NYC, uh, pretty good YouTube channel, and uh, I can tell you. What uh, really amazes me though is the amount of obsession one can take when trying to keep a car clean. Let me tell you, uh, here's some tips that I'm going to give you that uh, really kind of uh, give you the in-between. Like, do I want to go crazy and obsess all the time or do I want to enjoy the car and have a clean car? So uh, a lot of folks at work have been asking me, Bob, how do you keep your car so clean? It's always clean. Uh, it looks like a 2018. What are you doing? So the car is now four years old, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick shot here of um, what the paint looks like. You you won't find any swirls, scratches, or anything. So let's take a look at this. So there's a close view right there. And when we come down to here, I say hello to you. So, I can tell you it's uh, basically no magic that I do here. So, uh, what I basically do is I've, I've watched, you know, like I say, Ammo New York City, or I think that's what the NYC stands for. So, uh, I watched him uh, quite frequently and I'm amazed. I mean, the guy is like, like way obsessed. So, I didn't want to go to that level, but yet I wanted that kind of result. So I've figured out that once you keep a car and get a car clean once, then the maintaining bit is pretty easy. So first tip, the first time you decide, hey, I'm going to detail my car and get it swirl free and get it perfect. If you don't trust yourself to do it, have someone do it. Um, and if you do trust yourself to do it, go ahead and go through all the processes. Uh, watch uh, Ammo NYC because he tells you about clay barring, he tells you about uh, uh, orbital buffers, he tells you about which pads to use, yada yada yada. So you, can, you, you wind up going crazy by the time you're done watching that. So um, once you've done that once though, then after that it becomes really really easy. So the key is, step one, is uh, when you wash your car, make sure the sponge is clean. So do a little panel. What I do, uh, he recommends the two bucket method. I actually don't use a two bucket method. So I have one bucket, I use a high pressure uh, washer, I spray the car down, and then I set the pressure on uh, not quite so high. And after I wash a panel, I actually rinse my sponge with the, with the pressure washer, then I go to the next panel. Then I rinse my sponge again, then I go to the next panel. Uh, that has worked very well for me for many years. Uh, so the two uh, method, uh, the two bucket method, is probably pretty good. Also, um, probably maybe even conserves a little water. Um, so in any case, cleanliness is the point here. So you really want to make sure that sponge is clean. Don't wet the sponge once, soak the car, and then wash the entire car without uh, taking the sponge back off the car. I mean that's that's crazy because you're going to pick up dirt somewhere and it's going to go ahead and scratch the car. So um, that's first. Uh, stay really, really clean. If you drop the sponge, obviously, obviously, uh, get another sponge. Don't use it for the rest of that session. Go wash it, clean it. Um, so the second step is once a car is pristine and it's perfect and it looks like that, then what you want to do is you really, really uh, want to put some type of protectant on it. So there's a variety of different protectants. I've tried a ton of them. I've tried uh, McGuire's, uh, Carnuba, I've tried uh, McGuire's uh, 22, I've tried um, all kinds. Uh, I have found the best one for me. Let's go ahead and go over to my cabinet. Cab ouch. <laughs> go to my cabinet here. The best one that I have found has been this one here. So this is uh, actually a brand called Mazerna. You may not have heard it or you may have. I really like it. This is pretty good stuff. Uh, and here's why. Because I don't want to obsess and go crazy on my car constantly. And so here's why I like it. The stuff lasts for a good minute. 
So it lasts for a good minute. Uh, it, uh, uh, the stuff goes on easy, the stuff comes off easy, and the stuff protects very well. So is it going to go ahead and uh, give me the same amount of shine that say a Carnuba will? Maybe not, but if I'm not taking my car to a show and I'm driving it every day, which is what I do, then the compromise for me is I'd rather have the stuff last long uh, and uh, protect the car and make the car look really nice and I can live with the amount of shine that I can't see unless I go get a lumen meter and, and look at how much reflection there is. So to me, um, that's a good compromise. So that's the second thing. So once you've got it protected, um, then you're pretty much home free. Then from there, um, every third or fourth wash, you go ahead and protect it again and you should be okay. So the third thing is don't park under trees. Don't park uh, in places where there's sap. Don't park in places where they're doing uh, road paint work because all those things are going to cause problems. You're going to have overspray in your paint and every time you touch a car with a clay bar, so it's, un it's unavoidable, you have to do it from time to time. And so here's the one I use. Uh, it's a clay kit, um, very uh, mild uh, abrasive clay bar. So uh, I will tell you uh, every time you hit it with a clay bar, you're going to uh, basically be asking uh, for minor scratches. So um, typically when I clay bar the car, uh, what I will do is uh, um, if, if something like that were to happen, I would probably go ahead and buff the car afterwards. So um, is it necessary to buff the car afterwards if you're very careful and you use plenty of lubricant or surfacant, whatever you want to call it, uh, if you use plenty of that, then you'll be okay. Then you don't have to. But bottom line, um, you want to clay bar as little as possible. Therefore, not parking under trees will let you clay bar as minimal as possible. You will notice on the back of your M, uh, on the bumper, and on the back deck lid, you're always going to get a little bit of uh, 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 bumpy uh, deposit. And that's typically from the exhaust. So it's, it sticks to the back of the, the car and eventually you're going to have to clay bar that area. Um, and um, so that's the third thing you want to do. You want to make sure that uh, you don't have to clay bar that often. Another thing I see people going crazy with, and you really shouldn't do it unless you really, really have to. So if I see a tiny, tiny little superficial, I can only see it if I'm looking in the light, I'm like, ah, where is it? Oh, there it is. And I see a tiny little, I mean, super, super superficial scratch in the clear coat. And because of that super superficial scratch in the clear coat, I decide that's it. I'm going to buff the car. Well, every time I buff the car, because of that little super superficial scratch, I have now taken an entire uh, uh, amount of paint off the car. So however thick the clear was, it's not that thick anymore. So... Um, I have to say, uh, it's a good idea to minimize that as much as possible. And uh, I think uh, Ammo NYC would probably agree with me there that uh, if, you, uh, if you go and buff the car uh, and, and use a, a, a polishing compound every time you're doing it, you're taking material off. And so at some point, uh, if you do that down the line, um, there you go. You're going you're to have a... a uh, frozen uh, car. <laughs> you, you, you'll get the individual frozen color without even wanting it. So uh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, last but not least, um, don't mind walking. So uh, if you want your car to stay nice uh, when you go to the mall, park a mile away. The heck with it. I mean, just walk. What the heck? So we as humans don't walk enough anyway. So you're at the mall, find a nice spot, park away and walk. Um, you'll find that yes, there's gonna be that one jerk that parks next to you, it happens almost all the time. But uh, if you park in a spot uh, that is frequented, then chances are uh, at some point somebody's not gonna care and you're gonna get that, that ding in your car, which is really frustrating. You really don't want that. So I hope this uh, video was pretty good for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, those are my little tips on keeping my car clean 
and uh, take another look. So isn't that beautiful? So I can tell you um, I, I do nothing special. So um, if you uh, have questions for me, throw them down in the comments. Uh, I try to answer questions as I get them. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.